Hello everyone, it's Mark and welcome back. In this video I want to talk to you about guardianship and explain to you what the guardianship process involves and what it is. So when your loved one turns 18, they get to make their own decisions. Now if your loved one has a substance use disorder or a mental health disorder or both, um, those decisions may not seem all that rational, at least sort of when objectively you, you look at them and say, what on earth is that person doing? Why do they continue to use drugs? Why do they refuse to get treatment for their mental health issue? Why are they refusing? So, you know, I've talked about the Marchman Act, which is a, a treatment services order for treatment. Um, the guardianship, which sometimes we do along with the Marchman Act, is much, much broader in its application. And so we use it in a number of um, in a number of instances. Number one, what happens if there's no substance use, or what happens if we can't prove substance use, but we have um, significant mental illness? Then we can use the guardianship process to get somebody into treatment. So when I say that it's broader in application, what I mean is, in, in, in it's not just a court order for treatment. What it does is it basically turns the clock back. And what I mean by that is, if your loved one is say is 25. Um, before they turned 18, you as the parent, you know, in theory, had the the legal right to make decisions for them because they weren't considered old enough to do it, do it themselves. What the guardianship process does is it turns that clock back to when they were under 18, and now you, either as the parent or as even perhaps even as a grandparent or as a you know as a spouse, right? You know, anybody can in theory be can be the guardian, right? What it does is it turns the clock back and it gives you the authority to make decisions that are considered in their best interest, um, such as treatment decisions, uh, controlling their finances, access to their medical records, uh, limiting their ability to travel, especially if they're likely to hop on a plane and travel to a foreign jurisdiction where we can't touch them. And so the guardianship process is much broader in application. It's a little more complicated. My partner, Audra, is just a fabulous lawyer, and um, she's, she's arguably the best guardianship lawyer in all of South Florida. But she can explain the process to you. Now, as a sort of backstory to this, um, you may have heard of guardianship being used for elderly people. I know before my father passed away and he was clearly having some cognitive issues, the goal would have been basically, if we could have done or needed to do so, is to go into court and, and allow, uh, get a court order, you know, get a court uh, or a judge to order us and give us permission, allowing us to make medical decisions for them. If there had been money involved, we could have, you know, obviously taken control of the finances and use them in my father's best interest, such as using it to get him, get him treatment. And so, that, that's what guardianship has traditionally been used for, but in this instance, we're not using it for an elderly person. Most of our clients are young adults, you know, 20s, 30s, and perhaps even 40s, and we're giving the parents back the authority they lost when their, their loved one turned turned 18. And so um, it's a real broad uh, application, and in uh, in another video, you'll, you'll I'll talk to you about how you can use Marchman and guardianship together. So uh, with that said, thanks for tuning in. See you in the next video. Bye-bye.